Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a solar panel to a charge controller, a system that you can make for less than 150 bucks using a 40 watt solar panel. If you want to get below 100 bucks, you can use a 15 to 20 watt solar panel. All the links are below. This system is great for lighting in an area where the drop is too far away to run power lines from the power company. You may have a cattle trough that you want to look at at nighttime. The system would be totally self-sufficient. It would turn itself off when the sun comes up, turn itself on when the sun goes down, so you have light just when you need it. You don't waste light. The charge controller will prevent your battery from overcharging. There's a couple different ways you can do it. Another way is if you have vulnerable assets. So let's assume that you have a place where people might steal something. We've got a place like that. You don't want to put your panel and everything there. So you charge a seven amp hour battery that costs less than 20 bucks and you put a direct current LED bulb out there. A little bit more hands on. You're going to have to go out there and swap the battery out. But it's a great way to get lighting out there. If someone steals it, they get off with $40 worth of stuff. You can also use this system for an emergency power backup system to run small devices inside your house. A lot of people have been asking me questions about the backs of solar panels. The back of the solar panel is open for a reason. When sunlight contacts the solar panel, the panels absorb the light and they get hot. The front of a solar panel, especially in Florida, can reach 160 degrees Fahrenheit. People want to use the back of this to store stuff, make a little suitcase, carry their camping gear out there. Doesn't really make sense to me, but you can do it. Just do not have this covered when the panel's in operation. If this back area is sealed, the same thing that happens when you close up your car, you can reach temperatures of 180, 190 degrees Fahrenheit. While it's a great place to make turkey jerky, I wouldn't want to put anything valuable in there. Also, the hotter a solar panel gets, the more electrical resistance it experiences. This equals a drop in power. The charge controller that I'm using is a 30 amp charge controller. You can use a 10 amp charge controller. You don't want to go to like a 50 or 100 amp charge controller for this system. Higher powered charge controllers actually can draw more power if they have a fan to keep them cool because all of this stuff does get warm naturally by doing its job. The higher the amps, the more cooling that this is going to require. The battery that I'm using is a 7 amp hour 12 volt lead acid battery. I like this battery because it's inexpensive, less than 20 bucks, and it's tested technology. It's been around for a long time and it does exactly what it's supposed to do. Just like your car battery, when it's gone through its expected life cycle and it no longer holds a charge, do not throw it away. Recycle it. Lead acid batteries used to have a bad rap for the environment. Now, over 90% of them is recycled. When they recycle these batteries, they pull the lead, all the metals out, chemicals, the plastic shredded and used for new batteries, any of the metal components, just about everything is recycled. You can use nickel cadmium if you want for your project if you need a lighter footprint. Problem with nickel cadmium, they're more expensive and they have a tendency to get some weird charging memory problems. They can cause you some issues. The one battery that I do not recommend you use for a system like this is lithium ion. Lithium ion are very lightweight batteries. If you have the proper charge controller, then they'll work for what you're doing. An off the shelf charge controller like this one can cause the battery to also do some very weird things. It can fully charge and not discharge. It can overcharge and catch on fire. Or if you put a resistive load on it like an incandescent light bulb, it can drain the battery all the way down. If you do that a couple times with lithium ion batteries, they will never work again. So you can do that if you want, but I like lead acid. They are a fraction of the price of the other two batteries. The inverter that I'm using is the standard 12 volt to 120 volt DC to AC inverter. It's 150 watts. This is a good sized inverter for this system. I've seen people take larger inverters and put them on their system and say, hey look, I've got this small battery and I'm powering all this stuff in my house. I could hook a 500 watt or a 1000 watt inverter to this, but it's only going to last for a few minutes because the amp hours of your battery determine how much storage capability you have. More importantly, the size of your solar panel determines how much charging capabilities you have. In a perfect world, a 20 watt solar panel over a 10 hour day would produce 200 watt hours of storage capability to a battery. Realistically, you're looking at about 150 watt hours. That means after a full day of charging, you could take a 150 watt light bulb and run it for one hour. Or what we're doing, take a 10 watt light bulb and run it for 15 hours. They are interchangeable. This is a seven amp hour battery. Its maximum capability is around 84 watt hours. Realistically, you're looking at about 
70 watt hours. So we're talking about taking a 10 watt LED bulb and running it for seven hours. If you need more power, you can take two seven amp hour batteries, put them in parallel, charge them simultaneously, discharge them simultaneously, and you end up with 14 amp hours. So you can run more lighting. I'm using a 40 watt panel, so in theory, it would have the capabilities of producing 400 watt hours throughout a good 10 hour day. Realistically, it's gonna do around 320, 300, somewhere around there. So we could run three 10 watt light bulbs for 10 hours. That's where the photo cell comes in for our standalone system. It'll turn on at dusk and off at dawn. I like to use the 120 volt versions of these with a standard 120 volt E26 LED bulb that's rated at 10 watts. These are less expensive than their DC counterpart. You can get these for direct current, but they usually do not just have the automatic screw in and play function. If you are in an area where you're worried about people stealing stuff, this is a 10 watt LED bulb it has its own ground stake. I'm gonna hook it up to our battery. And this is what 10 watts look like. The nice thing about this system, this is all you put out there. Also, you can charge another battery at home so you don't have to worry about taking everything with you. You can take this to a remote location and put it on there. You can get DC photo cells for this that'll shut it off when the sun comes up. The nice thing about LED, you get a lot more light than incandescent. Also. As the power in the battery drops, as the voltage comes down, when the battery starts to lose its charge, these will gradually shut down. They will not totally drain your battery, unlike an incandescent bulb, which acts as a complete dead load and can pull your battery all the way down to almost nothing. If you need to put everything in one place, an old toolbox makes a great option. I'm gonna be doing a video showing you how to do that. You can buy a new one for 10 or 15 bucks. You want to mount your devices to the inner wall. That way, the metal box acts as a heat sink. These are usually water resistant, so the way that they're designed, this one's full, so I'm not gonna use it for that right now, but the water just runs around them. You may wanna seal the handles up with silicone. That's gonna be another video. For you guys that like to jump ahead, good option for it. Definitely put <laughs> ventilation holes in. Don't let the stuff sit in direct sunlight with no ventilation. The other nice feature about this is power outages. You have a very portable emergency power for a computer, laptop, maybe an LED light. If you happen to have a power outage during the daytime, you're in luck because you could be using this inside in any room without running a bunch of extension cords around while another battery is charging outside. So you don't have to drag the whole unit in. It's a good idea to stay about 20% below the inverter's maximum watt output usage. It'll work for powering LED bulbs small motors or laptop computers, anything that has a wall jack converter, the black box that sticks in the wall like cell phones, this will work great with. If you have sensitive electronics, such as a TV, some alarm clocks that plug directly in, then you wanna use something called a pure sine wave inverter. They look about the same, come in a little bit bigger box, but it matches the electrical signal that the power company gives you a little bit better. There are diagrams on our website, the links below to the three different systems that we set up and also links to where we got everything. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos.